We're delighted that Strawmax are supporting Alphabetti Spaghetti, one of the best shows that we have. And in true Alpha style, here is a little bit more about this incredible straw pellet bedding. So the S, it saves time, it saves money and it's sustainable. The T, it's time saving. The R stands for real straw. It's really comfortable, really fluffy, really soft and really easy. The A, it's absorbent and available. W, waste not. It is 100% natural. M, money saving. Maximise your pennies. Minimise the muck keep. A, follows on. It's affordable. X is for extra easy and extra economical. Who does not love any of those qualities? For more information, go to strawmax.co.uk. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. Welcome to the Echo Ratings Eventing Podcast. And listeners, we have got an Alphabetti Spaghetti show for you, supported very kindly once again by Strawmax. Now, before we get into the main show, just a little disclaimer for you. If you are new to the Eventing Podcast, then this isn't perhaps the show that you want to start with. There is little to no eventing in it, uh, but we have loads of great eventing related content. So go and check out another show lots of previews and reviews. And if I may put in a sneaky little plug for a, a, one of my favourite episodes ever, a Hall of Fame show with none other than Ian Stark, which is a brilliant insight into his career. Um, but on to Alphabetti Spaghetti. So it is the letter V. And in keeping, there is a tiny little bit, shall we say, of maybe vulgarity. So if you have small ears around, then it might be one to listen to with a pair of headphones on. Uh, and just a little word of warning, as I say, plenty of laughs, plenty of entertainment and the usual alpha madness is about to commence with myself, Nicole Brown, with special guest Frankie Terriot-Stutes, with uh, Spike the Vet and hosted, as always, by our very own Dermot Van. So here it is, Alphabetti Spaghetti, the letter V. Good morning, Alphabetti fans. It is Derm coming to you live from the top of the tower. I'm getting straight into this. It's the letter V and I'm joined by Nicole Brown. How are you doing? I'm trying to work out where that accent's from. <laughs> I mean, good, it just it? sounds a bit creepy, to be honest. I was honest. playing my radio voice. I was doing a radio voice for a minute. Okay, okay, yeah. I'm all good. I'm excited. We've got a special guest. I'm looking forward to this one. Oh, my God. She is drinking coffee the size of a trophy, the kind of thing that you wouldn't be able to buy in England or in Ireland if you tried. Frankie, where in God's name did you get a coffee cup that size? Hold that up again. Well, okay, so to give you guys some, I'm so pregnant, can't see that, but oh, it's, it's very not coffee pregnant, then, is it? a couple of weeks away from having this baby, and I have gestational diabetes this time, which let me tell you, when you don't eat any vegetables to start is a real problem, so you can't have like sugar or all these things, I have to take my blood sugar four days, four times a day, it's like this terrible downer, right, so this is actually yeah. tea, which unfortunately is sad. But yeah. I, get the when I can and pretend. That's no joke, the old gestational diabetes, is it? Are you all right? I'm good. I mean, I, I took it as a joke because, you know me, I try not to think take life too seriously. So I went in for one of my first meetings with, I have to go to this class called Sweet Success, like bad behavior, basically. And I go in and I kind of deferred the class. And then I go in and uh, the lady couldn't see me at first and my baby's giant. And so she said, well, I suggest you do like some light vacuuming. And I said, well, I've been running three miles a day. So is that fine? Or, and then I took my monitor and after the first, they said, we we'll need your monitor to download the data. And I thought, oh my God, like you download the data. And I've been like, you know, testing my son's blood sugar and my husband's and anyone mm. who wanted us for fun, not taking it seriously. So apparently it's a lot more serious than I took it because she came back in with the highlighted graph and I had to explain all of my bad readings. So I was there saying like, that one's not mine. That was a five-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> so she loved you. <laughs> yeah, they thought real highly of me as a, you know, a potential parent i think but so I've, I've been getting my act together a bit more in the last few weeks well since done. i've gotten in trouble good work uh finally we have um i suppose one of the most emotional men i know 
Spike the vet. Be all right. <laughs> Please, you pause there. Um, uh, I'm <laughs> I was really considering that how much more <laughs> I would not. say. I was, I was just thinking to there. myself when you said emotional. I've just it was my son's christening on Saturday. Mm. And I've had the most amazing weekend with family on Saturday and friends on Sunday because you got to split it because of all the COVID rules and all that sort of stuff. Okay. And um, yeah, by Sunday evening, I was just essentially a complete emotional wreck. And as we were opening all these amazing, lovely christening presents, I was basically just crying the whole time. So yeah, I probably am the most emotional member of the team. So yeah, I'm pleased. I'm pleased I'm living up to that. Frankie, would you be into that kind of stuff? Would you still, um, you know, um, this will be child number three. Would you still be kind of sitting there on a Sunday evening, sobbing, sobbing gently at the <laughs> at the generosity of? Uh, I mean, Francis. I'm Spike's a much better person than me. I kind of wasn't the first one, you know. So my mom the other day she said, you know, your first son came two weeks from where you are now. Like, have you bought diapers? And I said, no. Like, if I go in the hospital, can you pick some up? So I'm, I'm on the opposite side of the spectrum from Spike a little bit, but, you know, appreciate the generosity, but I'm, I don't like a big fuss for sure. <laughs> Nickers, I think you're somewhere in between, aren't you? Yeah. Do you know what? I, I would be one of the most organized people. And so when we were having Tobes, I thought I was really organized. Little did I know it was like I'd been run over by a 10 ton truck and then it reversed back over me again and I had no clue so I think I'd be a lot more relaxed if we had another I think I'd just kind of wing it slightly Uh, but yeah we Mm. couldn't figure out have I ever told you the nappy story go on no so we couldn't figure out how to put a nappy on we've not got any small children in our family or anything like that um and so I had Toby and it was a fairly traumatic birth not gonna lie And they kind of left us with this newborn baby that was screaming blue murder. And this was very much the aftermath of giving birth. And they kind of paint this picture of it's beautiful and all the rest. Well, basically, we stood in the delivery room trying to put a nappy on the poor child who was screaming. And you know those tabs that essentially all you have to do is fold over and they attach themselves? Yeah, yeah. Well, in our defense, we were very sort of sleep deprived, overwhelmed, emotional because it had been such an amazing experience and all the rest of it. And there's this small human that we're now responsible for. And could we figure out how to get that damn nappy on? And we spent about 15 minutes trying to peel tabs off the nappy to attach it. Um, yeah, and that's... then all of a sudden it just we put it down. And of course, it stuck. And we looked at each other and we were like, oh, that's how you do it. it. Um, but nobody told us that before we had a baby. So, you know, we just muddled our way through. I'm sure other people have been in the same situation. But, yeah, that was uh, an early experience for us. He was a very patient child, wasn't he? He is a very patient child, I suppose. <laughs> the at the, yeah. Well, I guess no. his turn. Ah, he is. At the time, do you remember? He was such a... The first six months were easy enough. He was quiet and calm. We'll, did we'll did do you it. live in our house? I Obviously mean, not. But no. what I mean is, when I met him, he was a understanding <laughs> child. House, caravan, whichever house. you want to Yeah, exactly. No, <laughs> we met then. him for like um, <laughs> half an hour in the media centre at Badminton, where the media centre isn't really a place for a small baby. I mean, he was about oh. six, eight months old but by this point, but it's not the place for a baby. So I'd sort of sn- kind of, snuck him in and it did then, us no favors did it we stood out no. like a sore thumb. and and then he was really well behaved um and then he basically he sort of was trying to sit up and he sort of fell over and started screaming and you have never seen anybody run out of a media center so quickly in your life um yeah, but no well. he was right he was fine yeah well let i would suggest okay well, let's get straight into this one of the key uh ways that um I expect all of us cope with these little treasures is um, with the first letter V, a letter V that's very close to my heart, mainly in me- in recent years. And it is, of course, a suggestion from Laura, and it is vodka. So this is actually one that divides oh. opinion more than I expected. Yeah, I can hear you. You're right, right. You right there. <laughs> okay. So, <laughs> you, like, uh, you like gin, but you don't like vodka, of course. Oh, I did a party once with a vodka fountain at New Year. And to be fair, I didn't even think I drank a lot. But uh, you know when people say you can smell vodka, 
I think mm. I was never a fan anyway, but you can't smell vodka. Sorry, I can smell vodka a mile off. I can taste it a mile off. I <laughs> hate the stuff. Absolutely. You want to get the good stuff, though. The good stuff you can smell. I've anything. tried the good stuff. No, can't. No, no. That was all the stuff no. they used to get told when you were at school. If you could, you could drink vodka and no one could smell it on you, so you could just drink it <laughs> 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 Frankie Frankie went to school somewhere in Iceland, California where they weren't drinking vodka in the school Spike because they couldn't smell okay, it sorry. I mean that's, I wish that was true but no <laughs> Frankie vodka were you drinking vodka I mean the first thing I think of when I think of vodka still probably like 20 years later after this happened was I we used to have these sheds at the horse barn and there were a lot of them and like you keep your tack in them but everyone kind of had their own shed they shared with a buddy or something and it was the summer and super, super hot. And one of my girlfriends had stolen vodka from her parents and put it in a water mm-hmm. bottle. So I got off my horse and I came in the shed to have a, you know, like have a swig so thirsty of just pure vodka that she'd put in there. And uh, I don't think I've ever like truly recovered. It still gives me the goosebumps. So, uh, you know, that's totally a fair amount, but ruined forever for vodka. That totally reminds me of smuggling vodka into the stables at the London 2012 Olympics <laughs> through all the, like, because we had all these sort of army people or whatever security on the gates and you, we're smuggling it in and, and bottles of Coke and things like that for the grooms. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you have to get creative. We did that on a cruise ship once and we did it in Listerine bottles, but then all the vodka tasted like Listerine. Really? M- <laughs> minty vodka? <laughs> green bottles in your suitcase so they just thought that you know all of us early college students at the time were had very clean good dental hygiene i guess yeah. but <laughs> in lockdown it's... last year d i made cucumber vodka it was brilliant brilliant in a bloody mary cucumber vodka in a bloody mary easily done. you are kind of into Amazing. vodka aren't you i drink most things in venice yeah i'm very big into it now it's my number one at the moment uh it was I'll tell you the problem with it though. I think I've I won't tell this whole story because I think we've talked about it recently on a pod, but you can get this thing called hard vodka and soft vodka. When you actually get kind of deeper down into the, you know, into this mire, you find that um the hard vodka is a very strong taste of vodka, kind of like Nicole is talking about. Soft vodka, that tastes like nothing. It's like those these new seltzers. Has anyone tried the seltzers? Oh, yeah. It's essentially just Big Spark- here, yeah, sparkling water alcohol. Do, so like, do you have a an example, D? And I will attempt it and report back. What's it like? Well, yeah, I'll get you some. Like, it's it basically you can buy it in a can down a call. Like, but I would prefer to give you the good stuff. When okay, we're all together gonna... again, and we're on your four hundred acre farm, and you've put me <laughs> and Denise out into the outhouse, I'll bring over some vodka, and we'll try and we'll. Really Nicole, if you come to the States next, you have to tell me because there's so many kinds here. I mean, they have every flavor, every, and it really <laughs> just tastes like bubbly water. Oh, the seltzer oh, stuff. Oh, dangerous. it's unreal. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, it's very dangerous, though, Nicole, because you find yourself <laughs> drinking. Do you know what I mean? Honestly, it is just like sparkling water, like with a little, like with a lemon in it. You know, you easy to drink, and then yeah, you'd be raw off. Anyway, okay. long story short, I started oh. drinking the vodka soda limes again after so lockdown one i drank a lot of beer um lockdown two i kind of took a long hard look at myself and i drank non-alcoholic beer and by the time this latest lockdown came around i was as big as a house and i had to decide okay no more beer and no more bread for a little while so i started drinking uh, vodka soda limes again god forbid i'd actually stop drinking alcohol but i decided focus sort of limes it was and yeah the absolute business i must say very very yeah highly encourage um i'll go into more stories about them later but not now because we need to keep moving now nicole let's just deal with this at the start um when you said on flick this afternoon when you were looking for the letter v keep it clean please laughy face <laughs> but well, all because I just thought when I put it into Flick, the first two words that jumped into my mind that began with the letter B were vagina and virgin. <laughs> 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 Maybe that's just an indication of where my mind goes. So, 
We all get told off all the time by Nicole for lowering the tone, and it's always Nicole that lowers the tone. <laughs> to be fair, I didn't plan on bringing that into the um into there was the nowhere show. there was but, nowhere for it to go and you put laughy face like i would have when you said the letter v <laughs> suggestions please fine but la- laughy face just obviously assumes you know that there's something very funny about the letter v <laughs> obviously okay obviously all our minds were drawn to vagina virgin and we'll come back to it in a moment but vagina okay i mean here, I thought, they call it a v card if you lose your virginity oh yeah we get that v plates we call them <laughs> yeah your v plates I mean, come on. The letter V opens itself up. Whoa, Frankie. It does, Frankie. Whoa, whoa, whoa. That's a really awkward. <laughs> no, Spike. That's an awkward. Spike. Spike, yeah. let that go. Let that go. Okay. Um, <laughs> Frankie. I mean, um, I mean, it could be Frankie, worse. Can we, we, can, be... <laughs> can we talk about how you have been? Um, our, I've been very conscious. We had a chat before Rosa was born just about parenting generally, and you were giving me kind of, you know, tips from the top about about parenting and one of the things we discussed was like uh how i suppose how i should talk to her about stuff you know that's not really that i've never really had to talk to a child about you know um bits and you said you know just get get to the point of all this stuff don't be like giving things the wrong names and that kind of stuff I mean, I just want to clarify that I don't think, you know, I'm like God's gift of parenting. I don't know that my advice is the right advice. Just... Well, were, I was asking for help. <laughs> I came to you for help. But, but like, I just I... don't want my boys to like, you get older and like, you have some weird sexual complex. Cause like someone was like, Oh, my beaver, like you're what? Like, <laughs> you know, like what is it really? Right. Like a friend of mine, she, I said something, her daughter was here and she like hit herself or something. And I said like, put your dress down. So no one sees your vagina. And my friend looked at me like I had said the worst thing in the world. And I said, well, you know, to my girlfriend, I said, well, I mean, what do you call it? And she said, we call it, I can't remember. And I said, well, that's confusing as all like, heck, like you're going to like, man, like someday she's going to say to like a man, like, so that is just sounds so odd. So like with my boys, I'm pretty direct, but I also, my oldest is like, for those who don't know, he's like having a real life criminal um, live with you. And then the universe <laughs> felt bad for me and gave me my second one. who's like a seeing eye dog. So my older one with this baby, because he's five and a half, I mean, you talk about some questions. I've had many moments where I have to take a deep breath and think like, how the hell am I going to navigate this question? You know, talking about vagina. It's like, mom, so the baby, it comes out of your vagina. I'm like, oh my God. Yeah, Drake. You know, well, how does that work? And my husband is very quiet. And I'm like, maybe he looks at me across the room just laughing. He's like, I can't wait to hear and navigate this one, you know? And you're trying not to like give the child too much information that's going to provide to its friends but i don't want to be like well drake it magically bursts out of my belly button right like <laughs> oh, I'm like oh my god oh, just inundated but i think as a parent you do have these questions all right like about for example like vagina and words that aren't like are hush hush but you gotta kind of especially if you have a witty kid you gotta navigate it right like like what do you do, do you do you say like you know well, what do you do First, Percy's only five and a half months old, so we haven't quite broached the subject yet. Well, you're so, I can't wait. <laughs> so, so, so my my dad is a retired gynecologist. <laughs> so, so it was it was always just a little bit more anatomical, really. I think when I was growing up. <laughs> yeah. So um, you were a penis yeah. and vagina family. You know, so that, like... I think I think actually we were a bit more of a fanny. I think if it was going to be anything, <laughs> and that was really <laughs> <Does> <laughs> <the word> <laughs> fanny, not just still make you want to giggle. Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, something that's bum in America, isn't it? Like, isn't yeah, isn't your yeah. fanny your butt? Yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. Oh no, my no, god! No, no. Imagine no, the over here, Frankie. Wires. It's your front bottom. Ooh. Imagine the cross wires. <laughs> your front wire. <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> see this is another reason why you have to clarify like i know i know you know makers how are you doing over there because you strike me as someone who'd be all over the place with this kind of stuff have, have, are you going with like correct words for toby are you does he have any how i mean 
to be honest, like I I would be a fairly sort of blunt person when it mm. comes to I would be quite straight up. And to be honest, if I can say something and it shocks somebody a little bit, I get a perverse amount of pleasure from it. Um so <laughs> I would be quite blunt. I haven't even thought about it yet. He's two and a half. He did, so he knows um so he knows like a horn as in a horn horn that beeps and all taught him the other week to start going around shouting mama horn so he went to nursery and was like mama horn and says that quite loudly at the top of his voice regularly but we've not got into any other kind of discussion yet thank god yeah okay i'm the same i've Thank God. Well, uh, Frankie, we're all behind you. So like Percy there for Spike, he's only a few months. Rose has just gone a year and Toby's two and a half. So, but I think the interesting thing here, lads, because you haven't had to deal with it yet, neither have I, but it's, um, it's more just conceptually what we're planning to do. And I do not know yet what way I'm going to go. I don't know if I'll be a Frankie or if I'll be Frankie's friend and just let Rosa kind of navigate it for herself as she becomes a teenager. I, That's all I look at it from a like a from a I guess a farming background of nature and it doesn't have to be a big deal. We can talk about it normally and it's a fact yeah. of life. That's how I look at it, Nicole. Yeah. My mom is like super just honest. Like if you had a question, she would just give you the real answer, not a big deal. Yeah, you know, exactly. about your parts. Yeah. And then I so I don't think it's as big of a deal, but you know, it's the same thing, like right around like people being you know, within reason, this comes out and sounds just so bad, especially from like the inappropriate American, but, um, you know, about like nudity, like, oh my gosh, like people get a complex about it when it's just, eh, it is what it is. You got what yeah, you but got. You're, um, you're from America. Like <laughs> I'm from Ireland, like in Ireland, in Ireland, you know, after like ten, five or 10 years of marriage, you're like, turn off the light before I take off my top. <laughs> <laughs> like, wrong like way. We're, we are from you know we're from kind of a catholic uh you know shameful country where you know we don't have that kind of relationship but even the word nudity everyone's like looking down at their feet begging the conversation to move on to something about like vodka or anything else vegetables veggie mite there must be something else how did we end up on penises and vaginas and nudity we're only on question you have an opportunity to shake up the culture it's like almost your obligation i feel like my mother was like the way you and nicole are carrying on there my mother was all penises and vaginas and i never forget it like the absolute um Oh, just a like burning shame that I had when she'd start talking. I could feel my whole face going red. I just wanted to not be in that situation at all. So I don't know. I mean, I think there's, I think there's a. F- I feel like this is a therapy session. Like we've gone on from alphabeti and it's turned into a therapy oh. session. And oh, yeah, I mean. the, the, I, I also feel slightly nervous about when I come back to edit this, listeners, just how comfortable i will be about the fact that we've spent probably a good 10 minutes talking about the b yeah. that i warned everybody not to talk about shortest um, podcast ever nicole it'll be like two minutes long yes yeah, exactly. <laughs> just, just be the advert really for straw max, and... yeah, <laughs> straw max. <laughs> right let's do it um okay voldemort good bad or misunderstood any harry potter misunderstood. Fans in yeah i was surprised at that one as well what do you think good. Yeah, I, I would agree. He's just bad, isn't he? He's just bad. He's just a horrible person. He who must not be named. He must not be saying. Frankie, did you ever get into those books? No, you guys, it's so embarrassing, but I think I'm like the only person who has still not watched or seen them. Or read them. A lot. Or read of, them or anything. Lot, so a, terrible. A lot of people. I, I, no, I think uh, opinion would be quite split now, even amongst this group as to as to how prevalent it should be. Jenny, of course, um, was the original and, and big fan of Harry back in the day. S- uh, Spike, I presume you're not interested. No, I love a bit of Harry. I loved the yeah. Harry Potter. Yeah, I loved it. Read them all, <laughs> watched them all. And yeah, very simple answer. <laughs> Voldemort is just evil. So yeah, he was. Go. He was bad. Okay, villain. Uh, the best in a TV or film. Okay, villains, lads. This is interesting. I haven't really talked about this myself. Anybody have a villain that you'd like me to start on? The Joker, the original Ooh. Joker was pretty bad. Um, you know, Joker second time around, Heat Ledger Joker was was classic. Oh no, was Heat Ledger? Was he Joker? Oh no. yeah, he was. And then there was uh, a new a new Joker film, wasn't there? Who yeah. was that? 
I'm trying to think of who the one I thought was so good before Heath Ledger. There was um, he's at all the Lakers games. <laughs> What's his name? Um, I'll I'll find out. But those were so good. Those really make you think of the ultimate villain. I just think mm-hmm. of my oldest son, but you know, yeah, he's only five and a half. He fed me cat litter the other day, so that's another topic. He fed you cat litter? Yeah, and then he said, pretty epic prank, huh? (laughs) I couldn't really argue with him because I had no idea he'd put it in my smoothie, and it was a pretty epic prank again. No way, Frank. Did he actually put it in your smoothie? Yeah, true story, and then I drank it. No, it was not clean cat litter. Oh, God. Definitely not, you guys. And he, he looked at me with his big old, like, beautiful eyes and he said mom you gotta admit pretty epic prank huh like that to me is like the ultimate villain <laughs> he is is jack this the, uh, as the joker that was what i was trying to come up what with. was his name jack nicholson oh jack yeah he was very good wasn't he he was the original i think he was the original joker mm-hmm. I think. he was really good um last story about uh villain child was it him or it must have been him who said about the house burning down, was it? Oh, yeah. He does them all. I mean, he's he could have his own show. He may need, he may just want to have a show with him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he told at school, he told, um, you know, we, we live in Northern California, so there's bad fires here. Obviously, we've been evacuated a few times. And uh, last year, when the fires, he, he went to school and for a full week, he said how sad he was about um you know his Gigi's house he'd lost she'd lost in the fire and it was just really hard for him emotionally and so the teacher said we're so sorry for your family's loss and I looked at him and he pulled his mask down and smiled and I said my family has hasn't had a loss Drake and he said sorry just thought he'd milk it for all he's worth. So he's, he's a quite a guy. He, I I like him. Like him. Well, this is what you guys have to look forward to. I just can't wait. I'm a little ahead of ahead of you. But one of you, the way lightning strikes, one of the three of you's yeah. child will be similar to Drake. It's inevitable. But, uh, you know, the, the he picked him up one day from school and I said, Drake, how was your day today? And we have a lot of hard days, right? Like, I'm like, oh, my God. I'm always like, oh, how was the day? And he said, I had the best day ever. And I'm driving home and I think, like, this is wonderful. What a great day. Drake had a good day at school. And then the teacher texts me that night and she said, so Drake got kicked out of movement class today. I thought, ugh. So I go in his room and I said, hey, Drake, what happened in movement class today? And he looked at me and he said, mom, I told you I had a great day. I never said Miss White was going to say that. <laughs> oh, my God. He's I'm so off, glad right? we don't have a cat right now. Yeah. The funny thing is, Nick, is, is that Dee and I are thinking about who we can have a fair guess at who it'll be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you see, I mean, he had a whole a whole story behind it. He he asked me for a sip, and then he, as he explained it, he said, "You know, he, you know how I did that? I siphoned it in. He used big words. I was like, wow, with my hand, I pretended to take a sip, mom. And I thought, oh my gosh, like, you know, my husband came home from work and." I work from home and the boys, you know, he said, how was your day? I said, well, today I drank cat litter. Like, I mean, you're not even supposed to change the cat box pregnant. And here I am like ingesting the dirty cat. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My money would be on Toby because the girl, uh, Percy... I think Percy sadly my fun. money's also probably I know yeah. Toby, Toby's I mean, Percy's got a few a few months to go to see whether he'll go that way but um... you just feel free to call Drake was such a nice like child before he could speak but he could speak by 10 months and then it was all downhill <laughs> oh dear. this is interesting okay version this comes in from Emily what would you change to be the best version of yourself hmm uh, what would I change? This version of myself. I'd probably go for a few more runs in the morning. Probably would have taken vodka instead of beer in lockdown two rather than <laughs> into lockdown three. <laughs> that, that would definitely have been a better version of Dear, I can tell you. 
<laughs> I catch a glimpse of myself over oft, every so often at the moment. I've really embraced kind of parenthood. It's um, it's a slippery slope, Spike. Let me tell you. Look after yourself out there, <laughs> Nickers. Best version of yourself is there anything you'd like to upgrade, downgrade, uh, change? I I would definitely have more willpower when it comes to not eating too much naughty food. What kind of food? Sweet food, like chocolate Sweet from food. cake and stuff. Because I, I like that too much. I you would have started with your hair. Would you not prefer a bit kind of blonder hair? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't know whether to be offended, but I actually think that one my hair is one of my favourite things about myself. So, uh, I'm only joking. Um, no, I like my hair, but I would definitely say hair. that I could uh, probably eat less bad food or have make more time to exercise. Or stop overthinking things and stop giving, stop caring so much what other people think. That would definitely be a yeah, good one. Yeah, that's a good one, Nickers. Yeah. yeah. Give you less F U C K S's. Yeah. Spike, you upgrade. You upgrade. No, I think that would be the same thing. I think I've been working on that in the last few years. But yeah, that definitely was some a, a bit of a uh, character limitation of mine that I spent too much time worrying about what other people thought. Um, I could probably do a bit more exercise as well. Uh, that might be wise. And uh, what else? Better version. Less chins would be good. Yeah, again, hard, hard to rectify all of a quickness, isn't it? You've got to deal with that over many. many so on seasons. Saturday morning, the morning of Percy's christening, uh, my lovely uh, partner Camilla said, "Do you not want to just try your suit on just to make sure that it still fits?" <laughs> I was like, "No, no, it's, it's fine." And then I had a fits. moment. Then I had a moment of realization. I bought it a couple of years ago when I was at a very difficult time and quite skinny. And yeah. I was like, "Oh, yeah, that might be a good point." So off I went into Bath to buy a new suit on Tuesday morning because there was no way I was getting into that suit. <laughs> that was a sad suit. And now yeah. you're in a happy suit. Exactly. That's, that's Which is a little bit bigger. <laughs> well done. A little bit bigger, but an awful lot happier. Well done. Yeah. <laughs> um, Frankie, any kind of versioning you'd like to do for I, back? I think, I mean, almost opposite of those two, just like I've gotten, I feel like as I get older, especially the people closest to me, I just, you know, tell them exactly how I feel. And sometimes maybe the version of myself needs to be to <laughs> quietly make suggestions <laughs> or Would you like You'd like to add a few filters. As opposed, you know, my poor husband, bless his heart, we've been together 14 years, like, what the hell happened to your hair? Like, why do you look like that? Or just maybe like a more subtle approach to those closest to me. <laughs> it's always good to reflect. Yeah. I think that's one of the great things about Alphabetti Spaghetti, sponsored by our friends at Stromax, is that uh, it does offer us these opportunities. I think we get the full spectrum here, Frankie. We've had tears on the show before. We've had some very serious conversations and then we've had um, kind Vaginas. of conversations. That, yeah, exactly. I wasn't going to say it again. Yeah. I mean, it's not too late. Spike could still cry. We're, we're yeah, the, into this. Spike is still, Spike is still a bit to go. Um, that is always a possibility. <laughs> okay. There is so much. I might break my own rule here. I'm going to break my own rule, but I'm not going to ask anyone else to do it. But V stands for Virgil, everybody. And... Uh, so I thought you were going with the other V that we weren't allowed to do. <laughs> no, we're, uh, I don't know what I'm talking about the other thing. Um, no, Virgil is off to the Olympics. Isn't that exciting? Michelle, congrats. One of, one of the best, one of the best horses in the world. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, one of the best horses, one of the best riders, Shane Rose and Virgil. Um, we're going to have a lots of opportunities to talk about the Australian team. I don't know that they're going to be under the radar at all. Um, there's a lot of excitement around this British team. There's a lot of excitement. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's not that excitement um, around yeah, you've the seen Germans. The, you've seen the they're, they're New Zealand team? Yeah, yeah, there's another V. You've seen the New Zealand team? What, is it out today? Yeah, mm-hmm. you've see, you seen that? There's a V in, in the team. Can you imagine who that might be? V. 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 Tim Price might be riding it, for example. You know, a horse that you were quite... You know, down on when Nicole Red mentioned it earlier, and then you know it was my dark horse for the year to you know right at the beginning of the season. Can you remember who that was? Hang on a second. This Can you remember who that was? To me. Breaking news. So we are recording this, listeners, for you Monday evening. It will be out on Friday, and as we sat down to record, the New Zealand team was announced, um, and it rhymes with. 
<laughs> Nothing. Vitaly. <laughs> Vitaly's gone to the Olympics. Vitaly yeah, is going to the Olympics. Isn't that, that's amazing, isn't it, Dee? Fair play to Vitaly, all right, yeah. Okay, yeah. like, how you just snuck in there, like, it was my dark horse <laughs> of the year, by the way. I this to oh, happen yeah. months back. Virgil. All right, Vitaly. Well, that's well done. Virgil. Sorry, Michelle. Sorry about Spike there trying to hijack what was going to be a wonderful uh, tribute I was about to pay to Virgil, but I think I'm going to save that for his own show. Um, veggies. Favourites most hated. Uh, oh. Vegetables. Vegetables are something that have, I suppose, evolved with my palate uh, as a child. I, I mean, my mark fed us all the different types of food, but I just... I suppose I was typically enough. I was um, just preferred meat. Didn't really like vegetables, and then I got married to Denise, and she removed meat, um, and you know a couple of other things that I love from my life. So now I only eat vegetables, really, and fish. But vegetables, I would say now I love nearly them all. How they're cooked, important, but nearly all the vegetables. The fav- my uh, my favorite one is asparagus. There. Ooh. Nicole, do you like vegetables? I do. I also I do love asparagus. Um we have so our, our next door neighbours grow asparagus and every so often they sort of put some over the gate and text us and say, Oh, we've sent you some asparagus and it's it's literally in the field next door and it tastes amazing because of it. Oh, um, Nicole, that's I amazing. Would, that is amazing. Honestly, it's it's so not easy nice. to grow, I don't think. And it has a really short no. season. Yeah, no, it's what brilliant. What amazing neighbours. I know, they're really good. We love them. Um, so, yeah, no, I love asparagus. I also, I'm a big fan of tender stem broccoli, randomly. Yeah, great I love a tender stem broccoli. Yeah, Don't like shout. purple sprouting broccoli, but I do love tender stem broccoli. And potatoes. We've had the potato chat. That was the letter P. We don't need to go there again. But yeah, I do love obviously, they're, obviously they are the best, if you're counting them as a vegetable. Well, they are a vegetable, aren't they? I suppose maybe technically they are. We wouldn't in Ireland consider them separate. Like you'd say, you're having potatoes and vegetables and meat for your dinner. You wouldn't say one is oh, included. Okay, potatoes have their own, own okay. category here, I suppose. Okay. Um, Frankie, I'd say eat some amount of vegetables in California. I, I mean, I hate vegetables so much. I, I honestly, the ones I eat are all like you, I'd call them carriers. Like I like asparagus, right? But really it's just like a spoon for mayonnaise. So as I've gotten older, like when a I was little. spoon for mayonnaise. <laughs> I mean, it's a carrier. It's a carrier of mayonnaise to get into your mouth. It's not like you'd ever have spoons. This, this is so surprising to me. Are you actually not a vegetable no. lover? No, I had my first salad at age 30 and I like, I'm not, I won't be committing to that long term. So God, I drink so green funny. juice because I, I know I need to, but I still honestly, you guys, full disclosure, just have like extra mayonnaise, only mayonnaise on my turkey sandwich. No vegetables to ruin the taste. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're so infuriating as a person. I mean, I used to like go sit on the stairs as a child. You can eat your vegetables or go sit on the stairs. My, I eat pretty healthy. Like in general, I don't eat a lot of really bad things. I just, I also don't eat vegetables. So, it's, and you I used to choose, you used to choose rather, to go sit on the stairs. Yeah, I did, and I think I'd rather, you know, I'd rather die at like seventy five eating bacon and not a lot of vegetables and make it longer. Happy. Yes, Frankie, you and you are so welcome on the podcast. Seventy-five fact, would I think be the you... upper end of where we could get to now in Ireland if we didn't eat our veg. Seventy-five yeah. would be a dream. You see, Frankie, do you want do you want to host a podcast? Uh, yeah, it's called yeah. like No Vegetables and yes. Vagina. <laughs> yeah. Wow, oh my God. I mean... Well, I'll be listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just interview my son about his question. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he did man. say actually. So we were talking about doing the parenting podcast that D and our D has been going on about for some time. If the Nicole, you've now got its it, name. That's we now what it's gonna be called. Podcast. <laughs> and, and No Vegetables and Vaginas is coming to a podcast app <laughs> near you soon. Um, but we did always say all along that Frankie would be one of our guests on oh, yeah, I think Frankie would. podcast. I think Frankie would have to run that podcast. 
Okay, um, I'm going to move on from that. Uh, Spike Vetrap, have you ever had to use it for anything, um, you know, for its non-intended use, I suppose, comes in from Ailish? Yeah, it does most things, doesn't it, Vetrap? We should have invented it. Must have, someone must have made a fortune out of that. Mm. Um, yeah, see, you can't ask a vet when he's used Vetrap for something else, because I tend to just use it for vetting really? stuff. Um, seeing people use it to keep their... You know, keep their boots together. Yeah, and... this girl, Ada Shear, has a picture of her boots all vet wrapped up. Yeah, grand job. It's quite good round if you're on crutches around the handle of the crutch. Mm. Oh, very good. That's quite very handy. Good. Um, yeah. Is it the same? Is it a global product, Frankie? Vet wrap? Is it the same in America? Oh yeah, we have it in all colors and patterns here as well. Mm. Yeah, this one on the picture is red. You, uh, it comes in like you can get a zebra print or a you know leopard yeah. print. Like that, I had it? some camo the other day. I yeah. Used. Yeah. <laughs> Did it hide the horse's leg? You just didn't know yeah, where it had gone. Yeah, he looked great. <laughs> just looked like he had three legs. Just camouflage. <laughs> yeah, exactly. um, vacation. Favorite location and why, Frankie? Where's the best vacation you've ever been to? Uh, did you say in Hawaii? Or just no, vacation? And, and, and why? Oh, oh, and why? Why? That's just just a language barrier. Why? Not why. Sorry. And why? Same language. Uh, Definitely hands down. We used to go on family vacation to the Caribbean every three years, and we'd charter a boat. My dad would drive it, which was a little sketchy sometimes, but so fun going island to island. Every night you wake up and you go to a different place. It's a total blast. Wow. Unreal. I bet you the other two won't have anything like that, Spike. Where did you go? So I used to go to Menorca every uh, summer as my family vac- vacation. Um, we had a little house there, a little townhouse, and that was where we go as a family every summer. And I'm hoping, depending on disasters and COVID and all that sort of stuff, to get Don't there. Don't start crying really. now and say that you're taking Camilla and Percy there. Yeah. <laughs> all right, moving quickly on before the floodgates open. Knickers? Well, I think this this question Devin. might have come in with a you're not Devin. allowed to mention Devin. <laughs> Sorry, actually, um, I'm moving on. Forget it. We're not talking yeah, about Devin I again. Don't, I don't think I would have to. I'd have to scratch out my own ear you you if you start talking. Do I have a passport? Yes, I do. I quite yeah. regularly travelled abroad, abroad with like ERM and. Um, and I've Carolina, been over to America, to well. Carolina, yeah, and Carolina stuff like that. But job. we just don't really go on a huge amount of holidays. And so when we, yeah, we just not really. This podcast is brought to you by Discover Devon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wish. Do you know what? I might, I might try that. If I'll tell you, you where I did go um... a couple of years ago that is absolutely amazing and people should go and that's Sri Lanka. It is the most incredible country and island to go and explore. So you know, as a favorite place to go, I, I did, that was brilliant. Yeah. Ireland is lovely. If anybody ever wants a trip here, <laughs> any particular part of Ireland? Uh, I think you've got to go to the west. So you got to get out of Dublin. Dublin is expensive, and it's kind of it's great if you're here for a weekend and a stag party. But you can kind of do that in any big European city in the world. So I would recommend that you get out of Dublin because that's a whole myth about people being friendly. When you actually go to the west of the country, which is very quick drive, it'd be like four hours and you'll be over there um that is actually really friendly much more like you see on the postcards you've got the sea you've got stone walls you've got sheep you've just got everything you've got kind nice people uh country music small pubs ireland's a very special place but uh i would yeah get out of the cities as quick as you can go for like if you're going go somewhere like the Aran islands or anywhere around galway all that all the whole west coast um, unreal Anyway, Nicole, I'm going on we, my holidays next week to Nicole, can we clip that? Can we clip that and send it to the tourist board of Yes, of absolutely. I, I fully plan on hitting they've up got, the tourist board. They've got of everything. The they've got walls, they've got sheep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, what more could you want? <laughs> I, I will I will be fair and say that we, we discovered the west coast of Ireland. It was the first time I've ever really been over there when it was your wedding day. And yeah. it was on believably beautiful Stunningly beautiful, it was wasn't just it? stunning and the weather was gorgeous and it was just 
amazing absolutely amazing so Ireland definitely is high up on our list we've had we've had a couple of trips and loved it um outside of the usual horse trial kind of there's been quite a lot of talk on uh on flick here about volvo drivers is this a thing volvo drivers spike you're a you're a man who i would go to normally to ask about car related issues um, but this is kind of seems pretty global thing. I see it happening in Australia as well as uh, other people agreeing. Volvo drivers is that a would that would that create a certain stereotype for you, Spike? I think it's a bit. Um, what do they call it in America, Frankie? Isn't that like what they call them soccer mums? Yeah. Well, we used to have Volvo drivers here in America, and I know exactly kind of what the stigma is around it. And then it's transitioned into Prius drivers here. So I don't know if you guys are just a bit behind on your Volvo, you know, Volvo driver, but it's definitely like slow in the way if you're trying to get somewhere, Oh, um, you know. I tell you what, I tell you what, they here. are probably, what is, what's the opposite of no vegetables and vaginas? They are <laughs> yes, only <scary>. vegetables. <laughs> and... <laughs> yeah. I saw a sticker the other day um, on a Prius here which again you know is like the new aged volvo i think in america and it said on the prius which i had to give the guy credit cool prius and then you know the the line of who said it and it said no one ever <laughs> well, i um yeah, i don't know he sat there this. going i'm about to buy a prius and if not it'll be a volvo prius i don't know <laughs> volvo are different volvo is volvo i thought was more of an aesthetic thing i remember when we were growing up volvo were generally regarded as like i think the ad was like they're boxy but they're good and it won loads of awards because it recognized that they were an quite an ugly car i mean they've become a kind of sought after classic now but the original volvos i think the famous advertising campaign was called they're boxy but they're good and volvo's entire um campaigns were all around how they were the safest cars to drive on the road when everybody else was worried about how nice you looked you know like when ferraris were just kind of starting to become ferraris um and cars were starting to kind of become fancier for the first time volvo kind of railed against that and went for boxy super safe safe. cars my dad Yeah. yeah safe the volvo suv now though is super popular in america and it's really beautiful Yes. Okay. Let's go with that. <laughs> Variety is the, this comes in from Sharon, friend of the show, Sharon Ridgeway. Variety, they say, is the spice of life. I'd be nearly afraid to see where this goes with this particular panel. Variety, they say, is the spice of life. But what do you always do the same, like a ritual or any routines that you don't like to break? It can be weird or it can just be normal, says Sharon. Frankie, I think, well, actually, maybe this is for everybody, but like, once you get into some kind of either life with horses or life with children, God, I find all the varieties gone out of my life. I'm living a very, uh, you know, by the clock. Just has to Love happen. Love a routine. Uh, yeah, you're a pretty, yeah. What's I, your routine? What's your so kind I, of first, what's your first 40 minutes in the morning? That's what I'll get from everybody. This is how I'll assess how routine. <laughs> my first Talk 40 minutes. Talk me through minutes. your 40 minutes, yeah. Do now do it in this? like a minute. I don't, you know on. this. It usually starts at something beginning with a four because my toddler wakes up at the ass crack of dawn. Oh, God. Um, yeah, you get up for So, yeah, I get up really early. So I would, I, I'm not a good person to start with, but I would say that something I always do without fail, and you will, you have witnessed this too many times that everybody has become desensitized to it, is before we go live on air, um, I stand and announce that I must go for my nervous wee. Oh, and yeah. and it's become a thing. And now the producer actually says to me in my ear, oh, Nicole, do you need to go for your nervous wee? And I'm like, yeah, 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 got to go, got to go. And I don't even need the toilet, but it's just a, it's a routine, have to go, got to do it. That's it. Frankie, you can either, you can either take, it from, no, you can take it from nervous <laughs> wees or you can start with your morning routine. I just don't even really have a routine because every time I try to have one, it goes south on me. So I would just say my routine is l- learning how to, you know, flow with the punches. I always yeah. put my left shoe on first, which is like a weird thing I always did in riding. And I still like, I always put my left tennis shoe on first in the morning. <laughs> but other than that, I don't know. I just try to make sure I brush my teeth. God, it's, I actually could 
listen to Frankie all day. I'm so fast. You're such a <laughs> so you're like um what was it Churchill described Russia as? He said it was a sort of a, a mystery disaster or like uh, no a kind of a mystery wrapped up in a riddle, something something enigma all all around an enigma or something. Anyway, yeah, there's so much going on in there, like firefighting from kind of whatever it is, six a.m. in America and not eating any vegetables and brushing your teeth and ah, oh, <laughs> there's loads going on. Spike, you you're a routine man, I'd say, are you? Falling out of bed, six a.m. to save a yeah. No, uh, I do actually horse. have a bit of a routine. I yeah. do have I have a strong routine actually. So, um, since Percy came into our lives, I get up at half six because he needs to be fed before seven. Half so six, I get up. All right, Spike, shut up. <laughs> Rub it in. Just shut up. <laughs> What? Half six. Nicole's been up since Nicole's Nicole's been up for about nearly three hours at that point, Spike. Yeah, so I get up at half six because yeah, you've Percy's said it. just you chatting said away it. and he's quite happy. So oh, yeah, I go in great. and then I make him his milk and I put the dogs out and I make a cup of tea for Camilla and a cup of coffee for me and I go back in and I give him his breakfast at seven o'clock in the morning. <laughs> he sits there oh my God. and he has his breakfast and Camilla goes off with it for a day. Uh, and on and away we go, and that's does he does he starts. empty the dishwasher and do the you know oh, sounds make lovely. your packed lunch and stuff before you yeah. go, Spike? No, that would be ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, that would be that would be ridiculous. Well, you're. I just like body. envision him coming out in the morning with a bow tie on. Like, yeah. he had a Frankie had a bow tie on this weekend for his christening. See, you'd have been very <laughs> pleased with that. In fact. I will show you a photo. No, 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 no photos of Percy allowed. We've, you can't. Uh, it's a podcast, Spike. Yeah, it's thank God, it's a podcast. It's a it's a medium through which we are not able to look at photos of Percy again. <laughs> um, Velociraptors. Do, do you, Spike? Uh, do you remember the scene? Jurassic Park. Your man on the portaloo, the toilet. No, that was a, wasn't that a T Rex. No, 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 my friend. He was oh, on well, the then toilet. I don't remember the scene, clearly. The door swung open and a velociraptor extended his full wingspan and made a sound. And quite a few people have actually asked us to imitate that sound. Now, Frankie or Nicole, would you be aware of a velociraptor and a sound that would, would go with a velociraptor? I, I have no idea what a velociraptor is. I know what it is, but I is can't it make a dinosaur. Sense. Oh yeah, it's a dinosaur. Yeah, right, yeah. yeah I don't like it's dinosaurs. Very carniv- carnivorous dinosaur. Yes, now we're into it, Frankie. And uh, my second son, the kind one who we haven't spoken about much because he gets cast into his brother's shadow quite often, is a big fan <laughs> of Velociraptors, and I actually have um, a very large one in my son's room. It's stuffed and almost goes to the ceiling. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's the only thing he's ever asked for, I think, to this day. And he would you send a it. would you send a picture as maybe we could do the title of the show with that? Yes, I will. I'll send it. Art. I think it's a Velociraptor. Are Velociraptor and the T Rex the same? They are better not be the same, are they? Tyrannosaurus no. Rex and a Velociraptor. No, so they no, different. they're very different. They're very different. Like one's so massive and one's T-Rex. I have a T Rex. I guess it's like the one you know, that stands on two legs. But to, with the little short hands. With carnivores, little... yeah. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, send me that anyway, because I'd be interested yeah. in that kind of stuff. I'm trying to um, I'm trying to get more into dinosaurs, if I'm honest. I actually find no, the whole thing fascinating. They look very similar, a velociraptor and a T-Rex, actually. Are you, are you looking up velociraptors at the moment? Because velociraptors are, I think, more like yeah. a bird on legs. No, see, so you got that wrong. So they haven't got a bird. They don't have no, a they're, like a, they're just like a smaller a, version of a T-Rex, but they hunt in packs. They're a very massive clever. massive wingspan, though. No. I remember the no. scene. He no. was on the toilet. He was the same. No, I think you're thinking of a pterodactyl that is the one that has, <gasps> like, wings. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think I am thinking well, the of The Velociraptor is, I think, what I have in my... It's like a mini Tyrannosaurus, but they were, like, clever and they hunt in packs and, like, the one you're ah. looking at one, the other one kills you. <laughs> I've been See? thinking of a pterodactyl all this time, I think. Is that the yeah, one from you Jurassic have. Park? Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't know any sound that comes out of it. I was thinking of a pterodactyl. Ah, oh, oh, well, that's that. Over. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone could clear that up, but both stand on their two hind legs. That I've determined now. <laughs> 
They're very uphill. Yes, very good numbers. <laughs> when have you embarrassed yourself in front of your vet? Or when has your animal embarrassed you in front of a vet? Spike, I'm sure you've had... Uh, I'll tell a good story about about a girl who's often on this podcast. I think we've actually told it before, but Sam was castrating a horse, not himself, but he was holding the horse while the horse was getting castrated. <laughs> and uh, and uh, love and, uh, that you clarified that. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, the vet was there, obviously, and uh, okay, so obviously they went to <laughs> Ireland. <laughs> so they went. Sam's holding the horse. Uh, he's obviously, I suppose, he's got his what do you give a horse before to get give him some kind of drugs so he's been calmed down a bit before um before they did this procedure on him quick quick snip snipperoo and anyway <laughs> the funniest thing ever georgia patrick um is walking across the yard just kind of casually minding her own business <laughs> out of a stable and onto the ground in front of Georgia lands a massive pair of testicles <laughs> from a horse or either one or two, but kind of splatted down in front of her. And she does not like that kind of stuff. But all they heard outside the stable was there was a little kind of boom of the of the, the oaks hitting the ground. <laughs> and then oh, there was this other noise like big boom. They're like, nobody did anything for a minute. But for, for, Sam was holding the horse, and then he looked out, and Georgia was lying uh, after kind of fainting on the flat of her back, lying in the yard, <laughs> like just lie, lie after passing out. But Frank, or Frank, nobody's called Frank. Uh, Sam couldn't hook. <laughs> Sam couldn't do anything about it because he was holding a horse that was kind of you know woozy, so he had to stand there. And the vet had to stand there, and Georgia was just lying on the ground until Sparks came and rescued her. Anyway, that's a little story about friend of the show, and I suppose she's an awful lot more friend of the show. She's often on the show. She's the senior analyst for show jumping and eventing in Eck ratings. That's Georgia Patrick, star, uh, star. The lady but, who knows far more than the rest of us put together, basically. Yeah, she's a smart girl, smart girl. Um. Vet, uh, has anybody else been embarrassed by their vet? About their vet? By their vet? <laughs> so I'm sure oh. plenty. <laughs> We've been embarrassed Spikes by probably our got vet, a few yeah. questions. I mean, I would say that um, I had a horse who just, y- you basically never knew if he was going to be sound or not. It was what he felt like on that day. And if he didn't feel like doing some work, he'd... That's why you need a better vet. <laughs> look a bit limpy. But there was this was the thing, Spike. Nobody ever found anything wrong with him. It was literally like he thought, yeah, no, I can't be bothered today. And so he would, you know, look a little bit sore and we'd go off and spend lots and lots of money and lots and lots of time and stress figuring out what, what was wrong with him. And actually there was nothing wrong with him. But yeah, other than that, no. Don't worry, that's not embarrassing, Nicole. There's worse things out I there. Can't, I can't focus on the word vet anymore because since you just told that story, the my I have to share this story, I guess. My dad is quite funny and um quite inappropriate. And his friends have had great pranks over the year. And similar to your castration story, our donkeys, we have many donkeys, were getting castrated at one point, and he saw it as a great opportunity to save the testicles and put them in pasta sauce and send them across the country to his best friend. No. And oh. yeah, and he said, I- I've got the best pasta sauce of all time, Mark. I'm going to send it to you. You're going to love it. You're going to have your wife fire up a big pot on the stove and make it. But make sure you call me before you take your first bite because I have to tell you, it's just stupendous. <laughs> So we did it as well as ordered. <laughs> Frankie, I would just say, and you were surprised when your child fed you cat litter. Yeah. Well, my dad and my child are are the same, you guys. My dad has a my dad had a boat called the Lucky Sperm, and then there's a place in America called Climax, Pennsylvania. So he registered it there. We don't live anywhere near Pennsylvania. Huh. <laughs> but I only thought that the world could have one of them. So now I have I have my what happened with the donkey testicles in the sauce? Can we finish this out? Where it happened? <laughs> See, so 
So, I mean, he did. His friend followed orders and there was like three notes that said, make sure you call me before because at least my dad is, you know, much older than my son and he didn't want his friend to actually ingest it. Just be so mortified when he had, so his wife made the spaghetti and he had, and my dad put it in this really good sauce so you couldn't really see the meatballs very well. And sure enough, he called it right before he had the big plate and it was all, <laughs> he told him what it was. And he rang though. He did ring. And he Oh yeah, he rang, but fortunately for him. But oh. and I take it they, they didn't get eaten. No, they didn't get eaten, but I mean oh. close, like many a good prank. I mean oh. you know. Oh god, that's so good. It's, and he's kinda of like that then, Frank, is he just up for kind of trying to Yeah, I mean he's just like super inappropriate all the time. Like we can't really, you know, you take him in public with a grain of salt that I all my life. In fairness, they do taste all right. <laughs> Spike, you've not touched that, have you? Test again. <laughs> Don't no, <laughs> okay, like the whole bat thing's getting a little weird at this point yeah. now because how many horses he's probably castrated. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and only some yeah, I'm not going to go there. I was going to was going to say something else. Okay, I'm gonna leave that. Uh, right, lads, we have to go. Time's up. This has been a great show. It's a, I don't know. We'll have to have some kind of review after as to whether we can ever bring Frankie on again. In, in lots of ways, I think yeah. it's been the best show we've ever done. And then in other ways, you know, we're going to have like, the T-Rex, we'll have whatever straw, max, like. straw Max ringing us to be like, oh, you know, we thought that was such a, just a harmless little show. And then, you know, vaginas and vegetables became, you know, at a, at a no, no vegetables and vaginas. <laughs> no, okay, no, of, sorry. You're getting the name of the podcast wrong. <laughs> a new spin-off. I, um, honestly, I'm getting all levels of anxiety around what I'll actually feel about when I edit this. I you think know what you're going to need soon, I'm Nicole? Rolling with it. Nicole, I think you might need a beep button, like, an, like a beep like when you start yeah. editing these. Oh, In honour of the letter B extreme vulgarity included vulgarity. in this episode. yeah exactly it'll be fine it'll be fine it'll be, listeners do you think it'll be I one of those will... podcasts nicole where it has a little e next to it oh, i'd love to get our i'd love to get an e <laughs> on our podcast no absolutely <laughs> yes. not one time absolutely not 100 remember nicole your goal is to not care what other people think is mine yeah <laughs> yes, remember that frankie <laughs> Yes, Frankie. I, I, I oh, you're working I'm on that. Okay. You get the you think, yeah, hey. Little I'm little. okay with thinking about what other people think about that. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I'll say I will. I will take that on board. But uh, poor, <laughs> yeah, I don't want to get messages uh, from people that have listened with their kids in the car or anything else, and then their child goes to school and says the B word. Um, yeah, it, it'll B-word. be fine. Time has come. Time has come. Thank you to Straw Max, of course. Um, hopefully, this is not the last ever show they sponsor. If so, we will have to tap up Athletics to go and find us some you new can sponsors. Just fire me. <laughs> so we'll be like, okay, to all the team at Straw Max, we have made some radical changes to the lineup after what happened. Mea culpa. That will never happen again. Um, There'll be no such uh, there'll be no such antics in the future. But for this one particular V show, started by Nicole Brown, she set the tone earlier on, um, and the mantle taken up, um, very much taken up strongly by Frankie there on that show to lead the charge. Well done to everybody. Thank you for um, staying with us for another Alphabetti episode. And Nicole, I know this is one that divides the fans, but we are logging off because we are on our way to watch. <laughs> Love Island, baby. It's nine o'clock. <laughs> it is. It is nine o'clock on Monday. We're recording this, listeners, and Love Island is about to start. Oh my god, they're going to be shouting! I got a message. Not tonight. Got a text. Got, got a text. A text. Right. Oh, on god. that note, right, got a text. Bye. I mean, imagine D in the Love Island has. Oh, I've got a message. Um, I don't know what that is. Oh, it's for another show, Frankie. It's unreal. It's like uh, oh, there's so much to talk about. But sure, we might have you back if Straw Max keep us. <laughs> to be determined. To be determined. Yeah, we'll let we'll let you know how it goes. Frankie's Good got her own show baby, to look Frankie. forward to. What was that? Good luck with the baby. Thank you.
And um, then Frankie's new show as well, D. <laughs> we're not. Can we not say that. the Don't vagina say word again? Word. You just said it again. Just leave it, Pete. Come on, log just off. Stop. Thanks, Frankie. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Nickers. <laughs>